us now is our friend Dalton Miller, former 105 Three the Fans staff member. He is an international draft expert by way of Portugal, and you can follow him. He is the lead draft analyst at the Pro Football Network. And a good afternoon, uh, Dalton. How the heck are you? Fantastic, General. How are you doing? It's fa- it feels great to hear your voice again. Man, it, it's great to have you on. You know, usually I only get to hear your voice uh, when we're playing video games there on, on, on the war zone. But I know it's draft season, so you probably have put mm-hmm. the sticks down for a while. And you're, you're getting ready to dominate this draft coverage as well, aren't you? That is the plan, General. It's going to be a long, uh, long couple of days for me, uh, particularly with, with working throughout the night here. I'll be working probably two or three hours every night after the draft is over. So into the wee hours of the morning here, but I am ready for it. Yeah, yeah, no, no doubt that that draft night one, the sun's going to be coming up in Portugal as you're going to be uh, giving the, the analysis to to your followers. Now, I know you're – you know, you're a big Cowboys fan, and I, I, I want to put down your objective reporter lens for just a second and tell me what would make you ecstatic if the Cowboys do at 26 a, a week from tonight? Ecstatic. I, so I love Mozzie Smith, the, the defensive tackle from Michigan, and I know that he has some consistency issues and he really needs to figure a couple of things out. Um, I think defensive tackle in general is just kind of one of the more difficult positions to transition to from the college to the NFL level there's a lot more to it mentally than a lot of people give it credit for but he's a dude who I think you know somebody like uh, Dan Quinn can move around play a little bit of one tech a little bit of three tech he's a fantastic athlete I think that depending on the situation he could even play a little bit of four eye on teams that like to run that tight front Um, so he's a player that I absolutely love Deontay Banks is probably my favorite player in this draft class I don't think after the combine and his testing I don't think he'll be around. That is the corner from Maryland. But those are the two guys I absolutely adore in this class for the Dallas Cowboys. Unfortunately, I don't think either of them will end up being the pick. Yeah, Dalton, there was some talk uh, coming out of the combine about Banks. And I think you're absolutely right about him and his ability. I think there were some questions about when people put him on the board. And were we were when you started to kind of really dive in on scheme and you know where are you supposed to be and what did you see and that kind of thing, I think that's kind of why initially we saw a lot of or heard a lot of buzz from the media scouts and then as the media scouts kind of caught up with the the scouts the, the scouts that actually you know with work for the teams and stuff we were starting to hear some of those whispers. Would that concern you a little bit if you in fact were hearing things like that? In Dallas' scheme, a little bit less. Um, It's getting more, I guess you would say, modern. Uh, Dan Quinn definitely does, you know, mix things up. But it is still a cover one and cover three heavy defensive scheme. Uh, So I think that he could fit decently well here. Obviously, you don't like a guy who is very good on the board. You also have to worry about some of the shoulder injuries that he had earlier in his career. He loves to hit people. Um, And for me, that's kind of what it comes down to is where, you know, if they end up drafting a guy like that, I just have full confidence in what Dan Quinn and that defensive staff is able to do when it comes to coaching guys up. Um, It it hasn't worked out on all of the corners um, for the Dallas Cowboys, but I'm willing to bet on the talent that somebody like Deontay Banks has athletically as long as well as just getting somebody on the opposite side of Trayvon Diggs who really enjoys contact. Dalton, real quick, if I could, on this. I was yep. gonna, about Murphy from Clemson, there seems the defensive end, the edge there, there seems to be people talking, and he was a, a guy that was maybe top 15, and then there's like, well, maybe he's the slider. with Between him and maybe a guy like Nolan Smith, how do you see those two, if, if in fact, uh, which way would you go if, in fact, one of those guys got to Dallas at 26? Yeah, I'd I'd be surprised if either of them made it to to 26, but there's so many edge rushers in this class and there's so many different kinds of edge rushers that, you know, maybe a guy like Miles Murphy does fall. I think Nolan Smith has kind of been one of the more under-discussed guys in this class, and I know that some of the uh, buzz around him has started to heat up after the combine. He's my second edge rusher in this class. I think he's absolutely phenomenal. I think he's the best pure pass rusher in this class. Will Anderson overtakes him because he's such a fantastic run defender. But if I was, you know, the Philadelphia Eagles say at 10, I would be considering taking Nolan, Nolan Smith. So for me, I love him with the Dallas Cowboys and what he would be able to do as an edge rusher. Um, I think getting somebody like Miles Murphy, uh, who can really set the edge and has a ton of upside, somebody that can learn 
behind Tank for a couple of seasons would be awesome as well. Um, but I am definitely higher on Nolan Smith. Hanging out with our former teammate here at 105 Through the Fan, Dalton Miller, lead uh, draft analyst for the Pro Football Network. He's live in Portugal right now doing his best draft work. Now, are you comfortable taking a tight end in round one if you're the Cowboys at 26, Dalton? No, I mean, personally, I'm just against it. I, I look at the history of the position, and I see that first-round tight ends just don't seem to work out. And, and a lot of tight ends in general, even your, your, your Travis Kelseys of the world, don't really begin to produce until year three, usually. And so for me, I'm drafting a guy who obviously you want to have around for 10 years. But with the way the tight end has seemed to go recently is guys start to produce in year three and year four, and then the team that drafted them gets outbid for that next contract, and they can't end up paying him. So I am one that would rather just stay away from the tight end position. Listen, I think Michael Myers is going to be a fantastic player. I think Dalton Kincaid is the best tight end in this class, but I think with the age and the back injury that I know that he was cleared on and medical rechecks have been fine, it still worries me a little bit because he's 24, and if he doesn't work out right away, then you're looking at a guy who didn't get good until 26 or 27. For me, the guy that I'm looking at, if they were to draft a tight end in round one, is somebody like Darnell Washington from... Uh, Georgia, and I know that he has a long way to go as a wide receiver, but I don't plan on any of these tight ends to have seven, eight, nine hundred yard seasons until year three anyways. So I might as well take the big dude who can really block like an offensive lineman. I was really impressed with that because you don't see that at the college level, and you rarely ever see it at the NFL level. I think that he has some things that he can work on as a blocker, but the physicality is there and the technical ability particularly as a pass rusher, or a pass rusher, a pass protector is what I enjoyed from Washington the most. Dalton, uh, I'm not going to ask you to take a running back in the first round, but I'm going to ask <laughs> you to take me to the, maybe into the third round, maybe the fourth round. Who is the guy on your board that is really the most complete back when you start to talk about the ability to run, to block, and to also catch the ball? Is there anybody in that third, fourth round that you, that you got your eye on? Yeah, I mean, it's probably a pretty popular name being in, in Texas, and he didn't get a lot of uh, play at the University of Texas, but I really like Roshan Johnson. Um, I think the uh, Dallas Cowboys are going to really like Kendra Miller as well. I, I think that those guys are good. You know, when it comes to all-around backs, it's tough because a lot of guys at the college level, they just don't get the opportunity to catch a ton of passes. Um, but a guy like Zach Evans is, is another one from Ole Miss who I kind of like in that range. And then – I didn't love his tape, but Israel, I cannot, ooh, the Pittsburgh running back, who I cannot think his last there name right now. Abacanadana, yeah. Abacanadana, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> wait, listen, if you're 215 pounds and you're running a 4-4, four four, um, I'm going to love that. Even if you're not a good running back on tape, just because I am all about being able to create explosive plays as a runner. And when you have that kind of physical ability, when you have that type of body style, I think that you can go and do stuff. But then you're even looking at guys like Deuce Vaughn. It's just a fantastic running back class in general. So you don't have to draft one high to get a really good one in this class. Although Bijan and I think Jamari Gibbs, both of those guys are pretty special. How do you handicap the third, fourth, maybe fifth round quarterbacks? The Cowboys have kind of talked about the guy they've done the most work on is uh, O'Connell from, uh, from Purdue. Toon's name has been mentioned. Do you have somebody else you like better uh, than those two guys? You know, I really like Toon. Um, and then for me, somebody like, I know he's a little bit older, uh, but Dorian Thompson Robinson, I, I know that he's kind of a favorite for everyone. And he might be even available a little bit later than that, but he's a really good athlete. And for me, I'm, I'm trying to bet in that range uh, with a guy like Dak Prescott as your starter, I'm not really looking for a backup. They kind of already have that. I'm looking for a guy that I can try to develop, and I think that DTR from UCLA is kind of that guy for me. What scares you more about the Eagles at 10, taking B. John Robinson or Jalen Carter? Oh, oh, Jalen Carter. Oh, for sure, Jalen Carter. That defensive line is already ridiculous. I think it's going to get even better in this draft class, unfortunately, with, with either the 10th or the 30th pick. Um but I will tell you what, B. John Robinson and Jalen Hurts in the same backfield, it's pretty terrifying. Um, but, but take a running back, you know, if it is at 10, I will feel a lot better because even for a guy that is special, 
taking a running back at 10 is quite the price to pay. It's Dalton Miller, Pro Football Network, here with you on your home of the Cowboys. We're talking draft path to the draft coverage is brought to you by Pluckers. Are you still looking for for the Cowboys to uh, improve their defensive talent base, or are you just thinking a BPA, most exciting player at 26, when you talk about the defensive tackle in the corner and some of your other answers? Yeah, definitely BPA, um, especially in this draft class. It, it's kind of a weaker one. So if you can get some value, um, you know, on the defensive or the offensive side of the ball, the problem with that is there's just not many great offensive players in this draft class. And I know that the Cowboys kind of need their needs are more on the offensive side of the ball. Um, I think some of the value might be on day two when it comes to the offensive side of the ball, just in general. I think the cornerback class at the top and down through is pretty fantastic. You're going to have to make a decision on Trayvon Diggs. You're going to have to make a decision on Micah Parsons, whether to pay these guys or not. And that is coming up sooner than you think. Um, so I'm always looking into the future. I'm not going to not take a cornerback in round one because of a 30, you know, two year old Stefan Gilmore and Trayvon Diggs on a soon to be expiring contract. Dalton, how do you have these receivers that are all in that five, nine range uh, at that? I've never been a part of a draft and I've been doing this in 92. I, I don't think I've ever seen this many five, nine or less wide receivers that, that people are talking about in the second and third round. It's amazing, and, and it, it stinks for them because there are a couple of guys in this class who are incredibly talented players but are just really, really small. Yeah. Um, Jordan Addison is fantastic, and obviously he produced like crazy at Pitt last year, and even though he didn't test all that well, um, he can take the top off of the defense, and I think that that's something that uh, definitely the Cowboys could use. Uh, Zay Flowers is probably my favorite out of the small guys. Um, I, I like his thickness that, you know, especially the thickness that he's kind of been able to build in this offseason. I know that he showed it off a little bit. I think that he can play on the outside, even at five foot nine. Um, Josh Downs, I think he's just a slot guy, but he's a really fun slot guy. And I wonder at the NFL level these days, how many offenses can really use that Cole Beasley type of guy. He's Cole Beasley, but on steroids because he can also beat guys down the field and be a deep threat. Tyler Scott is another guy like that, Cincinnati, too. Cincinnati, yeah. It, yeah, yeah. it's just, it, it's really tough to go. And, and then Marvin Mims at Oklahoma as well. There's just, there's so many of these smaller guys who are legitimate threats. And you could look at, you know, especially when you're looking at the Dallas Cowboys in that round two or round three level. Um, and then there's even, you know, bigger guys. I kind of like Trey Palmer as somebody who can stretch the field. And when I'm looking at the Cowboys, I'm looking for a field stretcher. Um, even somebody like Jaden Reed, who I think has kind of been under uh, scouted in this class uh, at Michigan State, I think he's really, really good. He's not super big at, at 5'10", maybe 5'11". Um, I think he ended up being under 190 pounds as well. But he's a lot of fun. It's just it's really weird because, like you said, you've been around this a lot longer than me. But I can't remember so many small wide receivers and them all going to be drafted over the guys who were – Five eleven, six foot one, six foot two. It's a yeah. kind of a weird draft. Yeah, I, I had somebody tell me that you know with the Cowboys, if you're trying to put a small guy with them, they just did that with Brent, with Cooks. You know, they that's what they just did. Yeah. They went out and got Cooks. And so, why would they? How many small guys do you want to have? You know, so I know people were talking about Flowers and others, and you know Dell from Houston and all that. So. Uh, yeah, if you're thinking about the Cowboys, they, they kind of feel like, well, wait a minute, we've we've already got our kind of our small guy. If you're if you're if you're looking for another direction, to me, you know, they maybe go for somebody with a little bit more length, like Tillman from Tennessee or a guy like yep. that. Yeah, AP Perry, even a little bit later, yeah, somebody Wake who Forest, can kind of yeah, stretch exactly. the field. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Yep. What what three positions do you want to have solved, if ideally, uh, Dalton, for the first two nights of the draft? Left guard, defensive tackle, and round three maybe linebacker, but it's not a very good linebacker class, so I don't I don't even know if they can really really do that. But those are the three that in a perfect world I would kind of go after. Are you surprised how 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 little depth they they still have at guard going into the draft? Yeah, it's weird because it, it all depends on what you think they're going to do. Are they going to put the best five out there? Because if they put the best five out there, I'm I'm kind of okay with what they have, you know, from a starting standpoint. But if you're looking at, at uh, Tyler Smith being your left tackle, things get a little bit more interesting. And 
I, I just don't know where they're going to go with this. I, I think that, you know, somebody like Steve Avila has been an incredibly popular name, and I don't love it at 26, um, but I think that he's the guy who he could even be around, um, at, you know, with their next pick in the second round. You just you never know with guards, um, with there not being that many of them in this draft class to, to be highly touted. Um, it might end up meaning that these guards go a little bit earlier, but with the wide receiver core um, in free agency, you know, nobody really paid any of those guys. So maybe the NFL isn't as, uh, you know, desperate for these guys as we think that they are. You, you sir, are a beast. Uh, we love it. Uh, thanks for coming on, and we'll send everybody to read it, your stuff and watch it at uh, Pro Football Network. Lead draft analyst Dalton Miller here on your Home of the Cowboys. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having me, General. 